Um, 10 months ago, in 2010 August, I went back to Japan, to, um, in Tokyo, to see my family there. And there I took a photo of Tokyo at night. Here, this is um, a typical night at Tokyo in summer. Um, this is how bright it could be. In 2010, Tokyo Electric Company, uh, which um, the, um, covers whole Tokyo area, has produced 60,000 megawatts, 60 gigawatts of powers. And however, in 311 earthquake, it has been cut in almost half, down to 30,000 megawatts. And as of um, day 24th, almost today, um, it has been recovered up to 43,000 megawatts, but it hasn't been, hasn't been really recovered yet. We are facing a serious energy crisis going on. So how should we solve this problem? First step, I think we should, OK, when I think about this, the power outage is going on when something, the disaster strikes, that would fail the power station and goes out the power outage. So what we could do is to generate the power when emergency situations is going on. And this is the um, rough sketch. I have used this. Um, this is intended for the earthquake power generation. I put um, a cubic hole in underground. I put a middle um, dead weight in center. And there's a six wires going around for the side. And as the shakes, as the ground will shake, um, the weight it will try to um, stay in its position due to a low in shock. And um, <coughs> that wire is, try, uh, is going to uh, transmit the energy that goes difference between the, shape, um, the ground and the weight. And this will be converted to an electricity that here it says dynamo and will be going to um, other mainstream in power. So that was like a rough sketch. Maybe this could be reasonable to use. And so basically, um, I made pretty much few points for this earthquake um, generator. That is, it will be built in underground. And we'll be having a backup ba battery so the communities around can use that. And it's not going to be that huge battery or the um, generator, but will be compact and will be built and de uh, deployed in many locations. And even if one of them fails, it won't affect the other um, generators there. Safe grid power, that's what I call it. And uh, as I was looking, this was my, the, the previous slide here. Um, that was my, just an inspiration. It, I thought it's not really convincing other people enough to um, promote this earthquake generator. So I looked, I surfed online and found, found out one of this um, structure it's, not, it's also in the underground, but it's also this part, the seismic isolation system. It will um, basically support the building. It will build in underground to support the building. Oh, in the base to support the building. And when the shake gonna happen, when the earthquake happens, it will minimize the shake that goes to the building. And I made a special attention to here, the shock absorber here, because I remembered a few years ago, I, I read on an online magazine, The Wired, um, I found this article that uh, one of the entrepreneur team in MIT has invented a shock absorber for vehicle. It's not just absorber, but it will create an electricity, which is cool. So maybe I could apply this, this um, seismic isolation system, and generate power. So this, will, um, this um, absorber will create six to eight kilowatts for the heavy trucks, and even for the consumer cars, it will generate three to four kilowatts. I haven't really tested out for the actual earthquake, but I'm expecting almost exactly, the, almost pretty much same energy or the power as it could generate for the cars. So that was my vision for generating electricity when earthquake happened. Grid power system here. How? How effective is it to operate the earthquake powering system? Well, I have made a chart here. Um, this is the actual raw data. 
um, the frequency of occurrence in earthquake um, for in Japan and around the world. And I looked at the data and I found out for um, 3.54% of all earthquakes that happened for all the world and that's above magnitude 3.0, it's going to happen in Japan, somewhere in Japan. And if you narrow it down to magnitude 6.0, it's going to have, well, if you narrow it down to magnitude 6.0, um, the 12.7% of all those will happen in Japan. So it's about one, more than one-tenth of huge quakes. Here you see a black dot. It's pretty much covered. So generate the power using an earthquake. Why do we need another? Why do we need to come up with another generator? Well, I have, uh, as I looked through um, other quotes, um, I found this um, interesting quote here. Um, he is a professor of um, Japanese classics and literature, um, Dr. Donald Lawrence Keene. He made an interesting quote in the middle here. I have been brainwashed by Japanese culture. The sense of resonation that tells us we cannot overcome nature fascinates me. That sense of resonation, I'm going to talk about quite, for quite a while. It's going to be a keyword. If you have seen the um, paint of Hokusai, I'm, has anyone actually seen this? Yes, few of you, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's one of the tsunami hit the Mount Fuji, which is the largest mountain in Japan. You know how the scale is going to look, wow. And the sense of resonation, we call them shikata ga nai, shikata ga nai. We know the power of nature from heart. And uh, because as we proved in the previous slide, Japan is earthquake prone nation, but not only that, we also got volcanoes, typhoons, disaster prone nations. So maybe it's, it wasn't really a wise choice to build a nuclear power plant, but rather for something else. With that keep in mind, I'd like to take a look at all those um, current method of generating a power, geothermal, coal, solar, from old classic one to a new one. And it could basically, uh, it could, I can categorize them into basically two parts. From um, fossil fuel based and to a nature based sources. Fossil fuel based being so popular that um, it will create a lot of energy and a lot of um, electricity. And it is so efficient that they have been, people have been using for so long time but it's also got some pollution. It could be hazardous and it could be low, but it's gonna produce some pollution. And so we have to shift to a nature-based sources, but this has been delayed because those, those um, nature-based sources are pretty much discovered pretty new. It's under development and uh, it's still ineffective. So it has been delayed. I put the biomass, by the way, I put it in the middle because as of the growing population of over 7 billion people, we, I, haven't, I haven't come to um, solve the problem of how to solve, how do, how do we deal with um, our food? Because food, food is our necessities here. So none of them can really be a perfect way to generate electricity. What should we do? Stick with the old technology because it's more efficient? No, we're not going to do this. It's the end of shikata ga nai age. We are not going to resign in this way. Um, it is our time to shift, even though it's not going to be a perfect, but close to a perfect nature source energy. And I'm going to call a new generation of power generation that is to make disaster profitable and at least more close to friendly. And as I told you, earthquake is not the um, only disaster we experience. We, have, we got volcanoes, typhoons, and tsunamis here. And all of them can be um, applied using the current um, technology here. Volcano could be used for geothermal, tsunami for wave, typhoon for wind. They've got same problems though. That is, um, they are not resistible in the ultimate um, situation. That means if they actually got typhoon, they have to stop the um, windmill because it's going to broke their wind or something like that. So we need to come up with a design that is basically, um, we have to design 
all these um, generators that is very um, resistant to um, severe weather and things. So it, got, it has got to have a strong structure, and we have to seek for better materials and things. We also have, however, got another um, aspect here that is just in case scenario, if something, if any of these broke, we have to keep the um, damage minimal here. So, like fail safe for low pollution, and if something broke, it's, it's going to be easy to fix back to normal operation, easy repair. And that quote, we cannot overcome nature. We cannot forget about this. And we're not going to assume that nothing accident, no accidents will ever happen. We need them both, obviously. And in 21st century, we have imagined a cool vision. Science and technology will create uh, some cool, ubiquitous societies. And that's what we've been um, imagining. That's what Japanese are also imagining. And this is our solution for all the typical Japanese here. Um, one of them is, could be a Honda robot, as you know. It's a humanoid robot. And other could be um, Aibo, it's um, the Sony has created. Those, um, we had had a huge prosperity in robotics. But, um, so yeah, I want to ask a question. Is there anything wrong with those? I don't think there was any, anything wrong. This is very, um, I like to say that, you know, um, these robots have been made the society so cool for the future, and this is how the society is going to look. But we have been imagining for future society so far away that we could have skipped some of the few steps that um, we should have gone over first. That is to make the solid infrastructures, lifeline infrastructures thing. We are not going to have any more vex with lifeline structure. With all those nature source, solar, wave, wind, and geothermal, we have to discover more about those things. What do we know about those science? What do we need to study more? What is, do we even have any ignorance? We haven't been covered with sun energy or wave energy. Those can be more used for us. And as I said, we, are, we know the power of nature from heart, and we are not going to um, assume that nothing will happen. We cannot overcome the nature. And now is the time to create our own standard using all those nature source-based energy so that um, we could approach, uh, we could show them for other world that we could be more friendly than ever. That will conclude my presentation. So I'd like to thank you very much. <laughs>